Good afternoon to you. Mark South of HurricaneTrack.com here with your hurricane outlook and discussion. Back at home in Wilmington, North Carolina. Now it is Saturday, the 22nd day of May 2021. And once again, we have a preseason before the season even starts. Name storm, the seventh year in a row going back to 2015. We had Anna back then, believe it or not, it was Anna that kind of kicked off this streak of seven years in a row that we've had development before the hurricane season even begins. This time it is subtropical storm, Anna, right there, a beautiful satellite picture of it, and it's out in the Atlantic near Bermuda. I'll explain this, why it's called subtropical, and then we'll take a look at some other things, including the remnants of 92L, which have moved inland over Texas, bringing more rainfall there. At least it's not as bad as it could have been with that scenario. But let's first start with Anna here this afternoon. It is located, well, to the east, northeast of Bermuda there, or northeast of Bermuda, and it's got winds of about 45 miles per hour, pressure about 1006 millibars, moving west at three miles per hour, so a slow mover. First name of the season crossed off the list, Anna. It is subtropical in nature, and this kind of helps to explain that. You see how it's out here kind of mixed up with this larger weather pattern. The energy associated with it is spread out over a huge area, as opposed to a tropical system, purely tropical, where the energy is bundled and there's warm air all around it, and it's in a big moist environment, kind of cruising through the tropics. The lowest pressure is at the center, and it's got a defined pressure gradient where the difference in pressure over distance is much greater. This is more spread out and just kind of loosely organized, sort of a blend of an ocean storm, like a big gale center that you would see over the subtropics, and one of these tropical systems, like we would see a classical hurricane. This is kind of a mix. It's kind of lost in between there, that gray area, if you will. Well, we have a name for that gray area, and they are called subtropical storms. And here's a close-up satellite animation of it in the visible spectrum. Really neat here from Tropical Tidbits. Now, if you just look at this by itself, and this is zoomed in to just a smaller area, you would say, hey, that looks pretty healthy. There's a center there, well-defined circulation, some thunderstorm activity on the north and east side, a little bit of banding going on. But that's a close-up. If we zoom back out, then you realize it's part of an overall larger environment that's more subtropical in nature. There's a lot of cold air aloft through here. That's helping to generate the instability that we see because sea surface temperatures all in this area are not that warm compared to what they are down in the deep tropics or the Caribbean over here. And it's because of the cold air aloft and it's anomalously cold air, it's colder air than we're used to seeing there. That's helping to generate the instability because the warm air at the surface lifts into that cold air and those lapse rates as we call it are enough that we get the convective activity that's allowing this to have any organization at all and so it's that mix there it's just kind of that gray area like i mentioned subtropical in nature not a big problem brought a few showers and some gusty winds to bermuda it is sending some wave energy out because it's out there a big circulation area those waves will emanate out the energy from that towards the East Coast and throughout the rest of the weekend that will provide for some potential swells and surf that could be up anywhere from Canada all the way down through the western parts of the Atlantic Basin coastline, eastern North America down into the Bahamas and vicinity. Nothing major. It's not like this is some powerful hurricane out here kicking up 50-foot seas, but there will be a little bit of wave energy added to the overall background structure of the Atlantic Basin and you have to be careful of that if you're heading to the beach this weekend today tomorrow and early next week until this subsides because remember waves rip currents those are all part of the hazards it does not take a you know sexy if you will strong hurricane that's got a lot of media attention everybody's talking about it 150 mile per hour wind you know 30 foot storm surge all that kind of stuff no 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 you can just get extra wave energy and that can cause a lot of problems rip currents and you know just the waves themselves if you're not used to that so just be careful all right it's all about understanding what we're dealing with even though it's only a subtropical system yeah it can still cause problems if you don't respect it 
and understand the overall situation. So here's our tracking map on the Hurricane Track Insider site. I really like this. Such great work from Will Woodgate over in the United Kingdom, one of our patrons and supporters. There's Bermuda for reference. And remember, Bermuda is not one island. It's made up of several islands, and the storm will gradually move away from Bermuda, and any inclement weather that you all have had there will subside over the coming days. And again, just to give you perspective as to where this is in relation to everywhere else, well situated off the east coast but those waves will get generated and sent out for a few more days kicking up the surf maybe a few overwash areas along the north carolina outer banks and some of the more vulnerable spots other than that just a novelty and again going back to 2015 i had to make a little cheat sheet here so i could make sure i got this right um we've had these name storms every year since 2015 before the season. As I said, 2015, Anna, May 7th. 2016, we had Hurricane Alex in January. January 13th, believe it or not, is when Alex... That was really weird, Hurricane there in January. 2016 was Bonnie on May 27th. 2017, we had Arlene on April 19th. Alberto, I went down to Mexico Beach for a subtropical storm Alberto in late May of 2018. Boy, was that a harbinger of things to come. 2019, Andrea... May 20th, and then last year, the most bizarre year any of us can probably ever remember, uh, for so many reasons, we had Arthur, May 16th, I went to the North Carolina Outer Banks for that one, after they opened up, they were all closed down because of COVID from late March until, I guess, early May or somewhere, so I got to return to a little bit of normalcy going out to the Outer Banks for Arthur last year, and then, just a couple weeks later, we had Bertha. Tropical Storm Bertha right off the uh, South Carolina coast in late May. I was in Texas with Brent and Mike doing some severe weather testing of our equipment, just like what I did this past week. And look, once again, this preseason development, it seems like <clears throat> every year that we're I'm gone or I'm doing testing of the weather balloon or other stuff, we get this preseason development. So who knows? Anyway, there it is. There it goes. Not going to be a big deal overall as long as you can deal with any high surf. I always try to temper that to make sure we don't just brush these things off because even if one person is killed from rough surf, rip currents or whatever, that, that makes me very sad. That's not good because we can avoid this kind of stuff. We just have to understand it, the whole package. Speaking of the whole package, boy, this is a really neat lesson in meteorology on so many levels. The center of circulation here for 91L, I tell you what, if it was not for the dry air and the fact that it's May and the Gulf water temperatures are just not that warm, there's not a lot of what we call latent heat in the ocean, or the, it's not in the ocean, the latent heat's in the atmosphere, that's not really there yet. It's just May, for goodness sakes. Uh, but had it been a month later, and certainly two months later or more, there would have been less dry air, probably less shear, and we could play what if all, all day long. You know the, You know the drill. You know what could happen. And this was well on its way to giving that a try, 91L, before it moved inland uh, down here along the Texas coast. But look, you can see the strong flow, uh, both at the low levels and the upper levels, helping to shear this system a little bit. There's some strong southerly flow over the top of it right there. And then the low-level center located in here not far from San Antonio and Austin. Now, luckily, it's not dumping a lot of very heavy rain, some heavy rainfall in here, don't get me wrong, these yellows and oranges, but we're not seeing the strong, ridiculous banding like we saw after Harvey made landfall. That being said, this is still some pretty heavy rainfall through the area along the I-35 corridor going up through, from um, San Antonio through Austin up towards Waco eventually, and then maybe parts of I-10 down here between Austin and I'm sorry, San Antonio and Houston, trying to scroll down. So yeah, there's a few heavier rain bands in here, but it could have been a lot worse. We try to take our blessings here when we can get them. Um, we know, we've seen it before, and it's been very, very wet here recently. So any additional rain will add to more river flooding and potential urban flooding, you know, the low water crossings you guys have out there, especially in parts of the hill country. Just think before you cross any of that water, all right? Be smart about it. Don't be in such a hurry that you do something dumb and then you're not around to watch these videos in the future, all right?
got to keep you safe, keep you educated on top of things, but I got to keep you safe at the end of the day. So the water temperatures, nah, they're not that warm just yet. 25 to 24 Celsius over here, so upper 70s, that's just not enough. I mean, for whatever reason, in the world of thermodynamics, on this planet, you need about 26, 27 degrees Celsius, which is about 80, 81 Fahrenheit, to generate the humidity and what we call the latent heat. That's the key here. That evaporation off of that warm water anywhere around the planet, whether it's the Western Pacific, the Indian Ocean, the Atlantic, the Gulf, the Caribbean, it does not matter. It's that magic 26 Celsius isotherm or line of equal temperature. For whatever reason, I haven't understood that. Why isn't it 24? Why it doesn't? Why is it not? You know, 30 Celsius. You know, that would be great if it was 30 Celsius. We'd hardly have any hurricanes at all. But as Neil Frank once said, you remember Dr. Neil Frank? I mean, come on, you got to know who that is, Dr. Neil. If we didn't have hurricanes, we would probably have something worse. I heard him say that one time, and that's true. So anyway, this magic threshold of about 26 Celsius, most of the Northwest Gulf, not there yet. And you can kind of blame that or contribute that, if you will, whichever way you want to look at it, to all this heavy rain that you've had and the pattern kind of dumping fresh water in the Gulf. And the overall pattern has kept the Gulf kind of disturbed. And so that's made it so that this system didn't have enough latent heat to work with. And that's a good thing because we know sooner or later these water temperatures will be creeping north and west and filling in and the entire Gulf will be 29, 30, 31 Celsius before too long. And then these types of situations will be a lot more serious as we go forward. In fact, if we look at what our good buddy Ben Knoll is tweeting the other day, mid-June in the Atlantic, he says, hmm, well this is the 14th through the 19th of June that I have stopped this GIF animation on. And there's that green. What does that mean? Right there, he puts the legend in there, the key, rising air. Rising air. So sinking air. And where is this? This is about 200 millibars in the atmosphere. If the air is sinking and converging, it's what? It's squashing convective development. You need rising motion. You need to have the atmosphere being able to breathe and create upward motion. And this green that we see in the forecast here, what we call the velocity potential, is favoring, this is from the Japanese Meteorological Agency, the JMA, around mid-June, most of the Atlantic Basin favorable. And look, that more solid green off the coast of Africa, folks, it is possible. And this is going to be what we can watch for. That's the beauty of this. You can see this forecast from a computer model, and it's showing this favorable window of opportunity. And then we can, sorry, I bumped the mic. Then we can verify as to whether or not something even happens. And what I'm seeing from this is the potential for these strong tropical waves to come off. And they may not develop out here, but when they get farther to the west, where it's also going to be fairly favorable, Western Caribbean, the Gulf, the Southwest Atlantic, by mid-June, the window may open for the possibility of development of a much more tropical type system that we're used to seeing. And then different people chiming in from Adam to Matt here, and you know Matt knows what he's looking for, and you can see here this is the Euro Ensemble Prediction System, the EPS Ensemble Mean, for again that 200 millibar velocity, and there's that green showing up in this particular diagram across this area right here. Basically the way you read this diagram, it's very confusing if you don't understand it. This is where we are now, this is where we're headed to the future, and you, if you could put this and kind of scroll it this is going forward in time. You understand this is where we are now, and then you go forward into the future, and this is all that upward motion that we're seeing, and this is the geographic area that it would cover. That's the bottom line. So in the Atlantic, it's green, all green coming up after we get out of this period of sinking right now. And you can even see that back on the, the graphic there from Ben. I'll go back and restart that GIF animation. At the very beginning, right there, sinking, all that reddish color, and, we, and yet, with all that sinking, we got subtropical storm Ana out of it and an almost tropical system in the Gulf of Mexico. It's a little bit alarming, but we don't want to be alarmist. We want to be smart. Smartest, whatever. Not alarmism, but smartism. There you go, a new word from Mark today. I want you aware. 
not alarmed or afraid, but aware. Because if you're aware and you're educated ahead of the game here, then you know what to do. You know, you know when something's coming, all right? And the window of opportunity for more impactful systems may be on the horizon after we get into the first part of June. But until then, we'll keep track of subtropical storm Anna, and you guys watch that rain in Texas there. Just be careful, especially in the hill country. Too much water too fast, you know the results of that. All right, if you're watching, well, of course you're watching on YouTube. <laughs> like and sub share. Sub I can't even do it. Start over, Mr. Sadaf. Like, share, and subscribe, please. That helps the algorithms do their thing. If only I could get an algorithm to help me talk more smoothly. Maybe one day. Um, hey, it is what it is. We're only human. Seriously, though, I appreciate you tuning in as always. I am on the YouTube as you're watching this, of course. And yes, become a subscriber on the YouTube channel and you get updates when I put these videos out as well as our live video. I'm on Twitter at Hurricane Track. See, right there, just like it's spelled, Hurricane T-R-A-C-K. That is our brand, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, and on Patreon as well, our crowdfunding support. If you want to join up on Patreon and get a bunch of additional content, that is how you do it. Have a great rest of your Saturday. I am Mark Sutter. Thanks for tuning in. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.